Hey everybody, welcome back to Legit Street Cars. My name is Alex and in today's video, I'm gonna try, and the keyword here is try, to install the cheapest long tube headers that I could find for my 2003 E55 AMG. And I'm sure we're not gonna have any fitment issues whatsoever. <laughs> Guys, wish me luck in the comment section down below. I'm definitely going to need it. All right, right off the bat, long tube headers are by far the best individual modification that you can do to any car equipped with the M113K engine. Long tube headers are good for about 20 to 30 wheel horsepower on these cars and upwards of 50 with a tune. And not only that, but you're gonna create less boost with long tube headers because you've removed a massive restriction in the exhaust and less boost equates to less heat, which is gonna make your engine happier for a lot longer. So definitely look into getting yourself some long tube headers and for now let's take a look at the cheapies that I'm going to try to install in today's video. And here are the goodies XSP long tube headers and guys let's just be honest with each other these are the same cheap Chinese headers that have been floating around for the E55 and the CLS55 for the last few years. You may have seen these sold by a bunch of different companies. They might have even been branded or badged differently but if the file footage picture looks the same they're likely the exact same headers, and this happens with practically any performance car. Someone comes out with a really nice set of headers, they're super expensive, and then they get duplicated and ripped off in China and sold by a bunch of different companies from all over the world, so this is no different. I've installed headers like these on Camaros, Mustangs, and Firebirds, and Corvettes, and everything you could think of, and although you do usually fight some fitment issues and some quality issues sometimes, it's usually worth it because they are like three times the cost of the expensive ones. For the E55, you can spend upwards of $3,000 for long tube headers in these. Although I've seen the price fluctuate online over the years by quite a bit, quite a huge swing. These are definitely under a grand. Uh, you can find them pretty cheap actually online as well, just straight shipped right from China. Uh, but I got these from Victory Road Performance in Virginia. They're 975 bucks for everything you see here. And the 12% off legit E55 coupon code is activated to save you guys some money. Uh, so so these are 304 stainless. They are double TIG welded. They look gorgeous. Although after a few heat cycles, I highly doubt they're going to look this pretty. Uh, and you get everything. You get your flex sections. You get your mid section right there. You get all the clamps. You get the cheap graphite gaskets that we will not be using. And of course, you get both of your long tube headers. Uh, there are O2 sensor bungs all over the place. Uh, and there are some extras that you guys should install uh, when you're doing this job. So let me show you on the table what I'll be installing in the E55 to hopefully make this job go a little bit easier. So I've never installed these headers or any headers on an E55, so I don't know exactly what issues we're gonna run into, which is why I'm making the video uh, to show you guys the good, the bad, the ugly, so you can make a very informed decision on whether or not you wanna spend uh, the more money on the more expensive headers. So we're gonna start off, especially on the Mercedes, with the engine mounts. You're gonna have a ton of room, uh, which I'll show you guys here in a couple minutes with the exhaust manifolds out of the way. So if you have worn out engine mounts, collapsed engine mounts, this is an excellent time to replace these. These. You have a bunch of awesome options. You can go with the aftermarket polyurethane bushings that are very strong, although they will transfer a little bit of vibration into the cabin, which is something I do not want. I want to retain the factory isolation from the engine so that the cabin isn't vibrating. I already have a car <laughs> that does that right there. Uh, so I went with a factory engine and transmission mount, but a subscriber reached out to me and said that a really good option is using the engine and trans mounts out of uh, the Black Series cars. So I actually had Kyle over at FCP Euro do a bunch of research for me, uh, and he found that the engine mounts out of the Maybach fit the E55, and they're a lot beefier, they're a lot stronger, but they're going to offer uh, that factory-style isolation that I'm looking for. So I'm going to try out these Maybach engine mounts, and then also here we have a CLK Black Series transmission mount. Uh, it looks physically the same as the E55 transmission mount, uh, but this is a lot more robust. I can tell the rubber inside is just very, very beefy, and you can barely move uh, this metal bar here. So hopefully uh, this will be stronger, but also offer that isolation that I'm looking for. Uh, 
Uh, something else we'll be doing, we'll be ditching the uh, graphite gaskets they give you in the kit. Those can have leaking issues. And we are gonna opt for the factory steel gaskets, which aren't gonna have any sealing issues. Uh, you also wanna replace all of the nuts for the studs for the exhaust manifolds at the same time. Uh, and these as well, these are the exhaust donuts. So this is all Mercedes-Benz parts. I got it from FCP Euro. So you're gonna get that lifetime warranty on the mounts uh, as well. Uh, so this video is gonna focus more on the installation and the issues we run into uh, and not the removal of the exhaust because it is uh, not factory. So the instructions for that wouldn't really apply. But if you guys do want step-by-step -step instructions to do practically any job on your car, I'll leave a link down below for a workshop manual for practically any car uh, for only about 20 bucks. Uh, but for now, what we're gonna be doing is taking out the Eurocharge mid-length headers and I'm gonna put these side by side with the long tube so you guys can see the massive difference. These things are gonna look like little tiny babies. Guys, the last couple threads of the last stud, it's all mental. Your body, your hand, completely wiped out. We got these off. It only took about an hour with a bunch of different tools. But let me show you one issue I've already ran into, which is no fault of the cheap headers, uh, but instead of the factory studs. Aw, uh, look at how little and cute these guys are. Check this out, guys. You can really tell the massive difference between the mid-length and the long tube. And they also make shorty headers that are smaller than this. And the factory headers are even smaller and more restrictive. So these are the Eurocharge mid-lengths. They're actually really nice. These are probably made in China as well, uh, but they've been on the car for about four or five years and no complaints whatsoever. Uh, so let me show you guys an issue that I've already run into. I was kind of expecting this, uh, but these are studded. So your exhaust manifold nuts uh, go over a stud. There's no bolt. And and these can be nice for holding gaskets, but also uh, not so nice for fitting the headers back in the car because these kind of get in the way. And then you can run into the nut getting stuck at the end of the stud. So what I've done here is I've made my own concoction out of this old gelato container of PB blaster and transmission fluid. So every time uh, one of the studs came out like this, I just dunked it in here. Uh, and this is hopefully breaking up the rust that's holding this together. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna take some needle nose vice grips like this. And then you're just gonna take your 16 year old Makita electric impact. And these nuts will come right off. So be gentle. Don't mess up the threads here. Use needle nose vice grip so you're not actually gripping it by the thread, uh, but instead that center portion and these nuts will come right off as long as you soak them for a while in some kind of penetrating oil or transmission fluid and then uh, just hand thread these back into the cylinder head and you are all set. Uh, I realized that the previous owner did have to do some modifications for those mid lengths. He cut out a little bit of the heat shield. Looks like he kind of hammered this in a little bit. So hopefully I don't have to do any of that anymore, but... I kind of doubt it, guys. I think I am going to have to modify something on this car to get those to fit. Uh, but we're going to find out here in a couple short minutes. All right, guys, I got the headers in. I'm completely exhausted. It took me about 20 minutes of messing around with this driver's side header to get it to go. Let me show you guys what I did. <laughs> Jacking the engine up did basically nothing. It actually made it worse. And our whole, our whole problem was right in here. This is where the guy had cut out this area uh, for the mid lengths. It's even worse with the long tubes. It looks like it's just really bad getting it in, but once it's in there, you can see there's a ton of clearance. So. Just having a hard time lining up the studs there. Uh, what I did figure out was if you take a pry bar and just pick a good spot like right here, kind of push the engine a little towards the passenger side, jam a piece of wood in here, kind of holds the engine over that way. Uh, and that really, really helped out. But wow, yeah, that was, that was tough. But uh, yeah, this is how it's gonna look except uh, minus that piece of wood. So 
Let me go bolt these things up completely and then we're gonna take a look at what we have to do to get the rest of the exhaust bolted up. Before we get to fitting the rest of the exhaust, I just wanted to show you guys what these things look like from up top. They look really, really cool, although they will change colors after a few heat cycles and then the coils will be in the way so you'll barely see them anyway, but right now, they look pretty awesome. Now these are all tightened down and don't feel bad. If you can't get a torque wrench onto every single nut, it's nearly impossible. I'll leave the torque spec uh, down below in the description box, but basically don't go too crazy on these little tiny nuts or you will strip out the studs. Now you may be thinking that this is going really, really nicely at this point. These headers look fantastic from up top, but we actually have a major hurdle that we have to get past before we can even begin to fit the rest of the exhaust. So let me show you guys what I'm talking about down below. Underneath the E55, everything seemingly looks okay. We have our steering shaft bolted in. There's no clearance issues here whatsoever. We have our bracketry for our O2 sensors back in, and that's okay, except our big hurdle here is right here. This heat shield is touching the header. There is no clearance whatsoever on the driver's side. And if we go over to the passenger side, there's clearance, but it's not much at all. So at the very least, I'm gonna have to massage these heat shields up, especially this one on the driver's side. I'm gonna have to get a pry bar or some screwdrivers in here and kind of hit this up. There's no way I'm taking this back out. Uh, that would take way too long. So I think I'm gonna try and make some clearance here, but I am very worried that once we get everything bolted onto the car and we get this car running down the road that the engine is gonna torque and possibly hit this or rub on this heat shield and that would be a major issue. So we're gonna have to figure this out and hope that we can move on to fitting the rest of the exhaust. So I'm gonna get to kind of some massaging right here and then I'll show you guys how far I got and if I think it's even gonna work at all. Disaster averted, at least for the time being. I was able to give us a decent amount of clearance by simply pushing up on this heat shield. So now I can kind of like fit a finger in here, which is uh, pretty good. I don't think we're gonna have an issue with this rubbing uh, when the engine is running, but I definitely don't know that at this point. I'm still a little bit worried, uh, but it was very easy to push the heat shield up. And as you can see, uh, probably good from this angle, we have a decent amount of clearance in here. And then I did the same thing on the passenger side as well, just for good measure. Uh, so I think this will work. We're at least ready to move on to the next step, which is fitting the entire rest of the exhaust. Uh, but I am a little bit worried still because just this is very tight in here. So is this side, uh, but we're gonna find out if we run into any more issues. For now, I have to remove this piece and this piece. I believe these are off of the old Eurocharged kit, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, and I am a little bit worried because the factory exhaust did break right here. Um, it wasn't really having a sealing issue before, but we may have to go to an exhaust shop uh, to get the backside welded in. And at that point, I may just get rid of the resonator because that makes it sound really, really good. But we don't know that yet. So let me try and fit the rest of the exhaust connecting this and those. Uh, and I'll show you guys what other issues I run into. The new exhaust on the E55 is looking fantastic, but looks can be deceiving. So let me show you guys some of the fitment issues that I'm running into and what I hope to do to fix them. First off, driver's side, we have uh, this right here. This is a little bit too close for comfort. I'm hoping once I clamp this down, it'll kind of draw it down, but that is kind of close to the floor right there. Uh, on the passenger side, this little flex section has been giving me a lot of problems. It's kind of just cut at a weird angle and it won't fit all the way into this pipe. So we have a little air gap here. Now I can kind of push this this way uh, towards the passenger side of the car and get it to slide in. So I might do that and then clamp it in really quick. It does have a flex section, so some movement is allowed. But I think that what's causing both of these issues is the fact that this pipe right here is just a tad bit too long. I was talking to my friend Jeremy who just installed this same kit on his E55 and he had to shorten this pipe up. So he cut off about a half inch from this side. It fits all the way in here. So you do have some meat to play with. Uh, so I'm hoping that with that, 
it'll kind of change the angle on this passenger side, bring it more this way, and hopefully this will all fit nicely. So what I'm gonna do before I start cutting is I'm just gonna simply remove this pipe and see if everything fits without it there, and then I'll have a better idea if shortening it will actually work. Uh, and then back here, what we're gonna do as far as sealing, uh, I'm gonna try using a U-bolt to kind of clamp down on the factory exhaust since this is all broken off. Uh, this factory gasket is definitely not gonna work. I thought I was gonna like jam it towards here and then put a clamp on it, not happening at all. So I'm gonna use a U-bolt to kind of push uh, on this exhaust on the outside. And then this is obviously slid in all the way. And I think that'll work only because the guy before me with the Eurocharge setup, all he had was this slid in here and he didn't have any clamp at all and we didn't have a ceiling problem. So if that doesn't work, I will have to bring it to an exhaust shop and at that point, we're gonna say goodbye to the resonator. So let me mess around with this. Uh, and then I'm gonna try and just bolt it all back together and show you guys if I ran into any issues. And then hopefully we'll get our first start with the long tube headers. All right, removing that pipe right there did absolutely nothing at all. We still have our little gap here. Uh, this flex section is simply cut at the wrong angle. So I'm gonna have to kind of push it towards that way, clamp it in and hope that this seals. And luckily it does have a flex section. So this will move that way. Uh, and this allows for a little bit of movement. So that shouldn't be too big of an issue. And I might use uh, this kind of like stepped clamp right here to cover up uh, any gap if there is any in the pipe. So we'll see what happens there, but this is the kind of stuff you're gonna deal with with these cheaper exhaust systems. Uh, the tolerances just are not spot on, and then on top of that, the tolerances of each car vary as well. So you're gonna have to do tweaks to the exhaust. This is why my buddy Jeremy had to shorten that pipe, uh, and it worked for him, but in my case, I don't think it would do anything at all. So you kinda gotta determine what your tolerances are for this kind of work. It can be kind of annoying and tedious, uh, and I've seen the really expensive kits have fitment issues like this as well. Uh, uh, so guys, at this point, I'm gonna wrap up the entire kit. We're putting the O2 sensors back in. We're gonna clamp it all together. And then the fun part of checking over the exhaust for leaks. All right, we are up and running. Everything is fully installed, fully bolted in, ready to rock and roll. And I gotta say, so far, so good. We just had one minor leak at cold startup from this connection here. I tighten up the clamp a little bit better uh, and that is fixed. We didn't have any leaking issues uh, with this problem area right here with this flex joint. I got it to seal perfectly fine. Uh, and then also I didn't have the right size U-bolt for right here, but it didn't matter. This doesn't leak anyway with nothing on it, but I'll put a U-bolt here just for good measure anyway. Uh, other than that, we made some good strides in getting some decent clearance in here. I don't think we're gonna have any issues with anything hitting uh, right here on this side where I was a little bit worried with the driver's side. I don't think we'll have an issue there. This is very tight, it doesn't move at all. Uh, and then obviously from before we had made our clearancing with the heat shield and that's all good as well. So one thing, uh, to note, you're not gonna be able to put your O2 sensors back in their nice and neat placeholders unless you extend the wires. They do uh, stretch all the way back where they need to go, the front O2 sensors that is, uh, but you're gonna have to use some zip ties and kind of zip tie them out of the way. Uh, I'm not running CAT, so we don't have any rear O2 sensors, so I'll just probably have to plug these up somehow. Uh, and that's about it for O2 sensors. I have my wideband uh, right in here, which they give you plenty of wire for that. Uh, so right now, I'm gonna go for a quick ride. We're not gonna really be able to get any traction since apparently it's snowing today in Chicago. Uh, so really when we go to the track, that will be the ultimate test on if anything is gonna torque and move and kind of rub up against the body. Uh, the only thing I kind of suspect right now that we're gonna run into is the fact that these heat shields right here are just in bad shape, like the bolt ripped out of them. So I had to use a metal zip tie kind of piece them back together, but I have a feeling those are gonna rattle. So I might just get rid of those all together, wrap the exhaust or modify this somehow. Not really sure just yet, but I'm gonna go for a quick ride uh, in the car right now, and then we will wrap up with a final conclusion of what I think of these super cheap Chinese headers. <laughs> all right, guys, I'm gonna end this video 
from inside the E55. I've been driving or sliding around for about the last half hour. It's kind of wet and cold out right now. And I'm trying to put the exhaust through uh, a really good test. So I've gone over a bunch of speed bumps and potholes. I've kind of tried to floor it off the line as much as I could. Uh, and so far, so good. I'm not hearing any knocking noises. I don't think the exhaust is hitting anything. It's not leaking. The car feels awesome. Oh, and the engine and trans mounts are perfect. They don't transfer any vibrations from the engine at all, but it also feels a lot more solid kind of when you take off. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain, but you just kind of feel more connected with these more kind of firm, stronger engine mounts. So really happy with those, and I will leave the part numbers down below. So overall, for about an $800 kit, we didn't have to do any cutting or any welding. I'm pretty happy with this. Now, don't get me wrong. I did have to struggle with the exhaust quite a bit. Uh, I got some help over the phone from my friend Jeremy, who had just done the job. Uh, so that was very helpful. So thank you, Jeremy. Um, but the kit ultimately fit fine. Uh, it's not leaking. We had one minor leak on the driver's side that I fixed in about two minutes. Uh, and yeah, right now we're sitting here and it's perfectly fine. Nothing is rattling or doing anything that you don't want it to do. Now, the one thing that I do have to fix uh, are those heat shields right in the middle. They're just kind of broken up a little bit and I can feel and hear kind of a little tinging noise. Uh, and I know for sure those are the heat shields, but the ultimate test will be at the drag strip once I strap the drag radials uh, on out back and we hook up off the line. That is the most the engine is gonna torque. So that'll really tell us if this exhaust is gonna hit anything like the underbody. So I'll definitely keep you guys posted in a future video when we go to the drag strip. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the thumbs up button, share the video, subscribe if you're new, all that awesome YouTube stuff. I hope that you all have a fantastic day and I'll see you all in the next video.